Although Grant Riller is currently ranked 43rd on ESPN's Top 100, I believe he is comfortably a first-round prospect, even a lottery level one in this class. While there are some questions with Riller, and perhaps some may not see him as a prospect at that level, he's playing in a middle school, College of Charleston, and the level of competition isn't too high. And he hasn't been an average defender either. So what makes us think Grant Riller will have a successful career in the NBA? Riller is one of the most talented offensive players in the country and is capable of scoring in a variety of ways. He has very few flaws on the offensive side. He is a three-tier scorer who can create chances for himself by shooting from the dribble, or he can attack from the perimeter. He is also a very good athlete who can use his athleticism and strength to enter the line and finish through contact with either hand. His off-screen type of play doesn't look good, but doesn't accurately represent his ability in those situations. While that doesn't fully compensate for his low production, 28 possessions in an entire season in a fairly small sample size, only 4.4% of his possessions. For reference, Riller scored .0963 points per possession on 27 off-screen possessions last year, placing him in the 62nd percentile. But let's dig deeper into his offensive strengths. Riller shows his ability to score in isolation and shoot from the dribble. He ranked in the 82nd percentile for shots off the dribble in midcourt, with 42.1%, 56 of 133. While these shots are not the most efficient ones, they are the most difficult and reveal an important skill. Teams need a pair of these players to increase their power. Riller sees different types of defense from defenders and can take advantage of multiple situations. If his defender gets too far away and challenges him to shoot a triple, he can accomplish that. And if his defender wants to play tight defense, he's more than capable of pushing his way to the basket. He has an incredible touch around the basket and has been one of the best finalists in college in recent years. One thing that sets him apart from the other guards in this class is his ability to press the hoop by constantly getting into the paint and finishing with contact. While it should be noted that Riller played against the worst competition in the group, his numbers really stand out in each category compared to the others. But he had already been a very good shooter throughout his college career. His ability to spot and shoot from the perimeter will give any team that chooses him flexibility in the lineup and allow him to gain more minutes with other ball handlers. According to Synergy, Riller ranked in the 97th percentile as the top pick and roll scorer. His versatile skill set allows him to score against different types of coverages, which is what makes him such a dangerous offensive player. Riller is not an elite passer, but his ability seems to be a bit underestimated. He has improved as a passer in each of his four years in Charleston and made a clear leap between his second and third years, and he can still improve. Before this year, Riller didn't show many advanced pick-and-roll readings, but the occasional glimpses are promising. It would be good to see Riller's attendance percentage around the basket a little higher, but this is not something that should be used alone. There is much more context to be considered with these percentages. For example, Cassius Winston and Xavier Tillman, who is excellent at setting up screens, rolling to the basket, and finishing off. Lamelo Ball, on the other hand, is an incredible passer, but his teammates miss a lot of shots, or lose the pass completely and the ball is lost. Riller was in 44.5% of assists around the basket last year, but having Jarrell Brantley probably helped a lot. Regardless, Riller has room to grow as a passer. He also has the tools to be a solid defender. His strength and athleticism can be very important in the guardhouse. He has fast feet that allow him to slide around the perimeter to defend and stop attacks. He has demonstrated good technique, chasing players around the screens. In summary, in the 2019-2020 season, Riller had the best numbers of his career, averaging 21.9 points, 5.1 rebounds, 3.9 assists, 1.6 steals, shooting 50%, 36% three-pointers, and 83% free throws. In that season, as in the previous one, he was appointed to the ideal quintet of the Colonial Athletic Conference. The 2,474 points he scored in 132 matches was the second highest figure in that conference from 1992 to date, being barely surpassed by Charles Jenkins, 2,513. He is creative with the ball in his hands and vertical. He attacks and puts pressure on the defense constantly. 
29% of his possessions came from pick and roll, and 17% in clearances. And he is also very effective in both areas. As a finisher, he is excellent once he gets to the hoop. He scored 62% of his shots close to the basket. He is physical and can finish with contact. His aggressive style of play leads him to take many foul shots. He took 6.9 free throws per game in 2019-2020 and scored 83% of them. More than half of those three points he scored in 2019-2020 season came with shots from the dribble, although he can also be effective on the ground. Good mechanics and accurate at shooting. He added 1.6 steals in 2019-2020 and also helped with 5.1 rebounds in 33.5 minutes per game. Perhaps the biggest concern is that he has been virtually untested against NBA quality players. However, I believe that given his conditions, his future as an NBA star is assured, with much more to highlight than his not-so-clear characteristics. Riller has the potential to be one of the best players in this class and should be seen as a lottery prospect. The chances of him reaching that high are very unlikely, so any team that ends up choosing Riller will get great value.